over in the back bay and I am standing in the shower of our, our primary bathroom here and this product you guys have asked, it's a Devline product. It's called liquid marble, it's essentially a waterproof plaster and this is final finish. You get that really natural cloudy finish to it um, and we are just talking to uh, Verge who with Van Gerben Plastering who's been working on this uh, and the process in which it takes to get to this point. There's actually multiple coats, um, I believe six or seven coats uh, to prior to actually getting to the finish. At this point we're finished and what we're going to do is we're going to leave this for the weekend, get the approval, the approval from the client to make sure that the color is exactly what they want, and then we'll go into sealing it next week. Uh, but you can kind of see all of these details that we've walked through in previous um, episodes is here's our HVAC register. This right here is actually going to be our exhaust. Um, and you can see how the flanges have worked. Previous episode, you can see that mud flange, they actually made this out of PVC and they went ahead and actually painted the inside of that black. We have the HVAC side over here for our high velocity system. Same thing, they went back and made sure that the edges are nice painted black. And then check out some of these true figs. Um, normally what we do is we'd faux paint these, but we were actually able to use the liquid marble and skim right over the top of these because it's really thin um, and, and our true fig plates. So we can take these and they'll be, they'll, they'll match completely um, with the, the surrounding wall. So at this point, everything is done with the exception of the floor. And then once this, the walls and ceilings are sealed, we'll pull this up and we're gonna do the floor. And I wanna show you guys what kind of what he's got going on. Out here, is, it's almost like a science project. He's got things being mixed with syringes. That's a big one. You got a little one. And I'm not gonna get into the formulas because number one, I don't understand them, but number two, uh, they are, you know, I was actually just talking to him. He's got about 200 hours into figuring out how these uh, colors work out to make sure that the colors are perfect. And this right here is actually a sample of another product that they're gonna be using on the floor. And what that is, is it has actually a, almost a sand texture. So when you're walking across the floor when it's wet, you don't slip where the walls have a more burnished, smooth finish to it. So you can see, we have that, we have samples over here, over here, over here. You can see how the pigments change throughout. So what really is important, what's really important here is that we have an approved sample from the manufacturer. And unfortunately that manufacturer doesn't give you the chemical makeup. It, it's really to get you within a color range. And from there, you're almost left to figure that out uh, in this case. And that's what he's been working on to make sure that that matches exactly how we uh, had intended it to uh, and how the client had approved. Last time I was here, this was only base coated uh, and it had this limestone look. Now it's final coated and it has this really big concrete cube feel. And that's what we were going for aesthetically. We wanted this concrete cube to appear as though it was essentially floating in this room. And the way it's floating is that we, we basically have this half inch reveal off of the floor, which this is, you know, let's, I want to talk about a little bit uh, stylistically what this means. So behind this plastic, we have a four to five inch, depending on where, recessed baseboard with a half inch reveal between baseboard and wall. We did not want to carry that half inch around the, 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 the fireplace because this isn't considered a wall. We don't want to have baseboard on this because this isn't a wall. This is designed to look like a cube or some sort of uh, extrusion and it's very separate, it's a different material entirely. So what we did is we've dyed that baseboard in and then we've separated the, the, the concrete cube from the floor by keeping it up off the floor a half inch. And then we done, we've done the same thing at the ceiling, we've actually dropped that down slightly more because that is our heat release. If you guys remember that as this thing heats up, it's actually gonna pour the excess heat out of the top of it. But again, you're separating this concrete cube from the plaster ceiling because again, the similar materials. And finally, this was a detail that we added. This right here, we've actually kept it off of the back plaster wall as well, where this is a painted plaster wall. We wanted a, a clean separation where yes, you could have this die into it, whether it's a cock line, a, a cock joint, or whether it's you know just a nice paint line. Rather, we've decided to keep, keep it off that back wall a quarter inch. Again, creating this concrete cube that essentially floats completely separated from the oak floor, the, the, painted, the painted walls and the painted ceiling. Um, so those are, like, those are the really intricate details that we have to think about really thoroughly up front because we want this to appear as though it's its own thing. And finally, the fireplace has all been, you know, basically trim, it's completely trimless. 
Um, we've run a stop bead and ran this plaster really tight to the fireplace, which will get exposed. And then we've prepped it for a television up top, which I appreciate the need for a television, but I almost wish that this was just a giant clock or something or a piece of artwork. But I know either way, it's gonna look, it's gonna look pretty trick. The last area that you know, they're working on in, in here is the guest bathroom. The walls and ceilings, it's all that one, that, that waterproof material. That tub where he's working in there, that's gonna be the same material as the floor, so it will have that almost sand-like texture. So it will be continuous across the floor, up and in the tub. And that sand-like texture is actually a resin-based product. And that's just one additional step that we're taking in that bathroom tub. Where you guys have asked about waterproofing, it is waterproofed with weedy. And then on top of that, it's waterproof with weedy um, membrane. And then on top of that is actually a stucco-based finish. And then we're gonna have that resin base final finish and then our sealer. So there's multiple layers of waterproofing that is really combating, making sure that thing is absolutely bomb proof. All right, we're over in Selfie. And last time we were here, we had talked about a lot about plaster. Uh, after plaster, we always prime our walls to make sure that we're locking in any of that moisture that could in fact escape and get into our moldings. Uh, we are dealing with pre-prime moldings, but in the rare case that you know the backside doesn't have primer on it, or we're dealing with something like raw poplar, we don't want that moisture making its way in because over time what that will do is we'll create grain rays and then that will transpose through uh, the, the paint finish. So we always get our painters in, get a fresh coat of primer on the entire place. Once the pH level hits a desired level, uh, we'll get into that in another episode. Um, and now we're into trim. The plasters are actually on site working on prep for our lime plaster fireplace, as well as some fi final details that we're waiting on for the millwork. Today I wanna to talk about our uh, interior trim. So we are installing a Kukin Brothers KB117 profile. You can see it behind me. Uh, it's a big, hefty profile. And the reason we chose this is because this is a pretty traditional house. Uh, there's some big casings on the lower levels. And that, being that we're up on the third floor, we are kind of doing this um, slow progression from very traditional uh, old style to a more modern profile. So this is much more square edge, a lot more angles, but you still get that big beefy casing and that nice bead edge on the jam side of that casing. So this is inch and a half by five and a half inches. Uh, you can see how the guys have been installing this stuff. They got their clam clamps as well as their pinch dogs, making sure that that miter stays nice and tight till the glue is completely dry. These will get pulled out. We'll fill those holes just like any nail holes that will get sanded and then painted. So found a piece of scrap on the ground, uh, KB117. It's solid poplar. Um, they have this finger jointed material that makes it super stable and allows for a single piece of casing rather than, you know, traditionally you'd have this as a built up piece with a flat stock, you know, a step piece and then a back band. This is actually one piece. But in these window wells, we're actually really confined. If you guys remember way back, we actually framed these out just slightly to, to allow us to get insulation around them. But when we were framing it out, one of the things I had uh, mentioned to the guys w when they were doing it is let's make sure that we're referencing our window and being really intentional with the distance around that window. So if we ended up with, say this is three and a half inches, well, let's frame three and a half inches, three and a half inches, three and a half inches. And that way the window is nice and centered. And we knew we weren't gonna be able to fit a five and a half inch piece of casing. However, we didn't wanna change the casing profile. So what we've done is we've actually taken this profile and cut out the center section and move that back band over. So we basically replicated this edge profile here. You can see that right here with that beaded edge and have eliminated the second step and then cut the back band off and applied it on top. And what that will allow us to do is it relates to the doors and everything else in the space, but it's shrunk down. Now, typically I don't like having our casing pressed up tight against these, these window wells, but being that the plaster was done so well and that this is nice and continuous, you have a nice flat surface to work off. You're not scribing discrepancies in the wall. This gives us a nice paint line so we can go from a sat, say a satin white to an eggshell white on the wall or whatever color, wall color this ends up. Um, so just a nice cool, cool detail um, with that casing. We're also installing the seven and a half inch uh, Kukin Brothers KB227 baseboard profile. Same thing, it's one piece solid poplar, finger jointed together. We're not doing a base cap on top. Um, and in this project, we've actually, uh, we're actually going about something a little differently than we normally do. We're installing our baseboard, baseboard first. Uh, there's this large debate online, baseboard or, or floors first. Um, we have decided to kind of switch up 
our process and do our baseboard board first because in the past what we found is that the shrinkage with baseboard in the height, I'm gonna hold this here, you know, when we scribe this bottom edge tight to our floor, you know, we can be really tight when we go to install. Uh, and then a few months later, it tends to shrink uh, vertically and come up off the floor, which you see a lot more than if the floor is pressed this way and it, say the floor shrinks on the horizontal, you, you actually don't see that because you'd have to look straight down. You'd have to look basically down at this wall, almost as if you were seeing that seam. Um, so we're gonna try it out. Um, I'm sure we'll get some you know, backlash on this. We, we've talked to our trim guy as well as our floor guy. They're comfortable with it, with the material that we're using. So we're gonna give it a shot and see if we end up with a better result. It's taught, that's part of our process. We're constantly trying to refine and figure out better ways to, um, you know, to do things not the easiest way, but to net the best result in the end. So I want to take this time first off to thank Cucan Brothers for sponsoring this video. A lot of our projects are modern where we don't get to use a lot of trim, but when we get to work in a traditional home like this and trim is required, we're always working with the guys over at Cucan Brothers. These molding profiles are from Cucan Brothers Classical Molding Collection, milled from poplar and come standard 16 foot lengths with a factory prime. And they were meant to replicate molding profiles from 200 years ago in the past. As an installer, I would have to use multiple profiles to achieve these built up looks, but because they use a unique state of the art finger joint and edge glue process for these large buildups, they are a single profile. Pretty cool. A custom look, installation ease of a single profile, and they have these in stock and ship anywhere within the United States with a very short lead time. If you want to check these profiles out, check them out at cucumbrothers.com slash classical. The plasters are back on site. Colby and his team, they are working on this fireplace. So at our back bay project, we kind of talked about how we had this cubic structure of, you know, this, this cubic concrete looking fireplace. We're doing something very similar here. We're using a product wood, which is called Limestrong. And this, this right here, everything is going to be painted um, in this room with the exception of this cube. And it's the same thing. We wanted it to almost look as though it was extruded up from the floor. Um, you see the steel brackets on the wall. We're actually gonna have a floating piece of stone that goes right underneath. James um, and the guys in the shop built this awesome walnut bookcase that is on, on the side here. You've seen in previous episodes that we were prepping for the install. You can actually see that detail come to life here where you know, Colby and his team have you know, worked with James and we have this small little shadow reveal. Everyone knows I love shadow reveals. Uh, intentional lines, right? Um, so we have this little quarter inch. This will get stapled to our blue board. That's what Colby's working on right now. And we'll have this nice reveal all the way around this walnut bookcase. Again, being intentional, separating the materials. Down below, we have that stone going around and that limestone will go all the way down to the floor. We'll actually tie our floor into it. So over at Back Bay, you, you saw that we kind of did this opposite where we floated the concrete above. This is almost the, the opposite where it's as though this concrete structure is you know, think of it going all the way down to the basement. It's this, you know, this monolithic piece of concrete that goes from basement all the way up, catches the fireplace as, as if this was a concrete chimney on the back of the home. In this case, it is not. Um, what he's working on right here is actually our heat release. So very similar, oftentimes you see it, uh, a grill or a register on the wall. We're always trying to in incorporate them from an architectural standpoint. So our heat release will be up here. Any any additional heat from that unit will go out behind this unit up and out of that reveal and if i follow this line here this actually ties in across to that ceiling so again being really intentional with that line you can see everything you know he's got that laser look at the laser moves automatically from there. so that laser you can see that 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 upper line right here is essentially where our painted plaster will stop and will tie in all the way across to that ceiling and then from this point down will be our lime strong uh, continuous all the way down and around that fireplace. So this is the last portion of their scope um, along with the painted plaster up there. We get the, the trim to wrap up and then go right back into paint uh, that once the trim is installed and then we'll get into floors. Appreciate you guys hanging out. We'll see you guys next week.